Now we were lucky enough to stay at the Greyhound on the test, which is right in the heart of Stockbridge, which is a quaint little English village in southern England. The drive is incredible, surrounded by lush green trees and pastures, and quite often you'll have manicured hedges literally all the way to the road's edge. We were going to Simon Cooper's head office, who owns Fishing Breaks, which organises various tours throughout uh, southern England's famous chalk streams. Now his head office is an incredible old building built over the Upper Test, probably one of uh, southern England's most famous rivers. He's also got a lake that we'll talk about later, but uh, did I mention his building is built over the Upper Test River? Yeah. Now, I think this is every boy's dream to have a lake like this in your backyard, stocked full of fish of that sort of size. I mean, they're gonna be, you know, three, four, five pound fish. Uh, to look out your window, you wouldn't want to go to work, I don't think. You wouldn't want to go to work. Yep. They're grayling as well, aren't they, those ones? Yep. Has to be more over a bit, does it, to be in front of him? Oh, he's come to There we go, got, got it. it. Well done, mate. Looks pretty good, mate. <laughs> hey. So this is a grayling, yep. which is something a bit different. We don't often see those. We've caught them in Alaska, but over here this is a prime target fish. And the beauty of a guide is I said, can we catch these, uh, Tony? He said, yep, cast it near it, let it get pretty close to it, and then draw your fly. So put a little bit of life into it, and he'll come over and take it. And Tone, sure as uh, banks will steal your money, he uh, came straight over and took it. Yeah. You can't beat luck. No. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Well done. Excellent, mate. He's a reasonable one and a beautiful little fish. And that's why they, uh, they're a grayling. They have that almost that big sail, like a big sailfish. So they're a, a different type of fish, but a prized fish too, aren't they, at different times of the year? Excellent, mate. We'll get that hook out and then uh, get him back in. You see, you see the underslung mouth? They're real bottom feeders, really. But they will come up and take a fly. Have you ever wondered if there was any fish in the river, you look at a place like that and you'd think they'd be sitters, but because um, there's sort of no food around, they're not really in a, in a feeding mood. So it's quite hard to get them to, to take. Never got anything to do with angler ability, of course. Nice. Well, that was uh, that was good. Just drifting him uh, down beside him, there, Tone, and he took an interest, which you know, makes you wonder, doesn't it, Tone? While uh, that one liked it, why didn't the 474 other ones? Well, it's good to finally get a, a fish to take. Not that it really matters. I mean, but you're always casting at target, so it's still uh, quite exciting fishing. Um, but to get one to take and that bend in the rod makes it all the worth more worthwhile. It's just a beautiful place to fish here, isn't it? You just, you know, you're surrounded, lovely bush and uh, lovely clear water, mate. She's pretty special. Well done, well done, mate. Good job. And a beautiful little brown from the uh, river. Diva. Diva. Fantastic, mate. I better get him back in. Somebody else can come over and catch him. Beautiful. Thanks, mate. Yep. Just try. Have you got your clippers to be able to cut that one off? It's a very dull bead. They, yeah. They tend to shy away from the gold heads when it's bright and shiny like this. I yep. Think. I should have brought my clippers. And, but yeah. Why? You've got a guy. That's right. Yep, yep. Don't have a dog and bark. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just there, just moving now. Yep, yep, okay. Okay. Alright. Oh, 
Oh, there's a couple down there. Yep. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Wasn't that a, just a change of fly for these that we'd had a go at before? He decided he wanted that one. All right, mate. There you go, big Tony's, he picks out the right flies. That's what you need. There's plenty of guides that pick out the wrong fly, mate, but you're just picking out the right ones. You're very kind. Yeah. And they're just stunning fish. Um, Tony was just saying how cool the water is. It's actually quite warm, like it's um, probably 25 odd degrees Celsius. Yeah, at least. And the, uh, Tony was saying the water's actually very cold still, even with the sun, so. Almost good there. How's that? Nope. Good, well done. Yeah. That's a beauty. Tone, they're just stunning colours. Funny enough, they look like uh, our Australian and Tasmanian ones, don't they? Yeah. Which is very, very similar because ours, um, our browns obviously came from here, you know, Absolutely, way back in yeah. uh, 1864. In the boat in yeah. The, in the sphagnum moss, yep, yep. <laughs> Amazing. Just beautiful, and that's fish. what you, you come across to fish these lovely chalk streams for, for something like that, isn't it? You know, so yeah, we get him back in. I'll leave the super guide to put him back in, mate. Let's cool. Do it up by the bridge. Yeah. Love that, you deals. All good. So when uh, somebody comes across from Oz, you can uh, get them to catch that one too, mate. Sitting their way. Yeah. A fish that understands the accent. Exactly. <laughs> Good. That's it. It's nice to see them swim away. Ah, yeah. Now, these chalk streams are an incredible place to fish. As you're walking along the mowed areas that follow the river, you can think of the history and, and who's been there before you. You look at the, um, the whippersnipped reeds so that you can see the fish and it doesn't get in the way of your casting. The prune trees, crystal clear water, and the abundance of both fish and wildlife. It really is just a place, an awesome place, to spend a bit of time, and it has to be on your bucket list. Wasted on the English, though, isn't it? <laughs> You're probably right. Mm. So it's always a giggle. If you can't have a laugh, there's no point saying anything, really, is it? You know. So yeah. Well, so you've been doing this for uh, quite a while, mate. Yeah, 26 years. So I started it uh, yeah 26 years ago, and I was young, fresh-faced. Yeah. And so yeah, and I had this idea that people would like to go chalk stream fishing, and yeah. I sort of did all the guiding myself, answer the phone cut the river banks, did everything. Yeah. Yeah, and here we are. You've got quite a few beats that you look after? Yep, um, yeah. we've got about 20 different rivers. Wow. Uh, and it, it's different in the UK. Um, every river is privately owned, so there's no public access. So the only way you can get to fish it is by the permission of the landowner. That usually comes with the gift of having to give him money. <laughs> yes, yes. <sure. laughs> so, so we've got about 120 miles of chalk streams. Wow. And so, so we stand between the, the river owners and the people who want to go fishing. Yeah. Uh, chalk streams are, aren't necessarily difficult to fish, but they're definitely different to anywhere else in the world. I, I think you'll struggle to travel anywhere in the globe and see quite so many fish in one river at any one time. And that's because chalk streams mm. are just stuffed full of food. So they can have a huge density of fish. Mm. But the trouble is because there's so much food, these fish can afford to be incredibly choosy. And, and you've probably seen it today. They just sit there. And it's not like on a little sparse mountain stream where they have to take every single bit of food that comes past because there might not be something along for the rest of the day. Yes. Here, they know there's just food going past. <laughs> and so yeah. here they can be incredibly choosy. And so yeah. you, you know, you'll hear this phrase, match the hatch. And that's what you really have to do. You have to focus on what the fish are feeding on and then put an, pretty well a precise imitation in front of them. And if you do all that right, then they'll take it. But, but I think half the beauty of chalk streams is because it is so clear and that water is so pristine that you're seeing all your fish. And that's, I think most fly fishermen enjoy the sight fishing aspect, which here, you just get it in spades, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, our season officially, officially runs from um, 
early April through to the end of October. But in, in great measure, you can discount April and October. The weather's a bit too variable. So really the prime months are May to September. And it doesn't really matter which month you come in. Um, the great thing about coming in June, July, August and September, yeah, you, you're going to have some really beautiful countryside and some really good weather. So, yeah. um, but as I said, I won't worry too much. Um, you don't need a week. Uh, and you certainly shouldn't fly all the way to the UK just to fish the chalk ships. What I would do is I would plan your trip to the UK. Maybe you're coming on business. Maybe you're coming to see your family. And just put two or three days aside to come to the chalk streams for an hour from Heathrow, which is the airport yeah. you'll mostly uh, fly into. If you're staying in London, you can hire a car and be here in an hour and a half. Or we have a service where if you get on the train, it's an hour from central London, we'll pick you up at the station, take you to your hotel, and then all the rivers are within a 45 mile radius of where you stay. And uh, take a guide, he'll provide all the gear. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. People actually often, asking what is a chalk stream and it's sometimes people think it's actually it's because the river's running through a chalky area it, it's not that at all it's because the water fell as rain last winter on the chalk downland that surrounds this particular valley yep. and it filters down and then pops up in the spring as springs and it always comes out it comes out Gin clear, alkaline, and always 51 degrees. Well, yeah. Winter, summer. And so if you see a chalk stream today, it will look almost identical in the depth of winter. It won't be very different. It won't be flowing much faster, it won't be much deeper, and it will still be equally clear. So, that, it's, that, so that's different to say a spate river. I don't want to eat that now. People do get addicted to chalk stream fishing, and you can see why. Yeah, they? oh yeah. Yep. I think we need to get the river keeper back in. He needs a little bit more uh, whippersnipping done here. Come on, fish. Yeah. Oh! Wow. <laughs> but that was good. That was supposed to happen, wasn't that's it? You know? Yeah, Big times. Yeah, that. that's it. We taught him a lesson. That's it. Oh! So he looked. Just. There we go. That was interesting. That's a uh, couple of casts of that, and then he decided he wanted that like it owed him money. So he was. Yeah, yeah. That was good. And it just, I keep saying it, but these beautiful, clear chalk streams are just exceptional. You know, just uh, you see everything unfold. And as a fly fisherman, just that sight aspect is why you do it. So it's. Uh, it's a pretty good tone, isn't it? You know, so uh, not a bad way to spend a day, is it? On a chalk stream in southern England. Lovely wild browns. Pound, two pound size doesn't really even matter, does it? When you get them to come up and take a dry like that and see it unfold, life's pretty good, mate. Lovely pound, that one probably two pound even. Oh, beautiful little fish. We might get him back in just to keep him going. But great fun, mate. Great fun. Yeah, they are special fish. Right up. Perfect. Plenty of life left in him. Good. That was hard work for that one. Yeah, wasn't it? it was. But beautiful. Very rewarding. Yeah. That's one of the things. When it is hard, as a fly fisherman, you get one like that, and you can, you feel good about life, don't you, Tony? You go, wow, everything's pretty good, and uh, yeah, perfect. <laughs>